I want to say to you this morning this, faith must fight. And uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, you are probably familiar with this verse, verse 12. And Paul is exhorting uh, his son, really, in the faith. Timothy, thank God for fathers and sons in the Christian faith. We need more of them today. We've got a lot of inept men in the church today because they have not been fathered. They have not been coached. They have not been mentored. And the men are real quiet right now. And I tell you what, the church will rise up and become that fiery burning light as men of God begin to rise up. But men need fathers. And I just thank God when I get into Timothy, I'm like, man, Paul the apostle talking to Timothy like a father. And I like there, verse 11, he's like, but you, oh man of God. <laughs> I want to speak to some people in this church today. Hey, hey guys, you're not just a guy, a man, you're a man of God. But you, oh man of God, I'm talking to you. You may still be in Gideon form, but you're a man of God. Remember, Gideon was hiding under a tree. And God called him a great man of valor, mighty man of valor. Because he knew what he could do, and God knew what he was purposing and calling him to do, and he called him that. There should be a lot, a lot more people. I tell you what, I'm nothing, but there should be a lot more people standing up here like this with a bold voice in God's church today. You got to even get over men going to listen to some other man who has a bold voice. You need to do that too, but you've got to become the man. You've got to be a man of faith who moves mountains. You've got to be a man of faith who moves the devil out of the way. This is what our families are waiting for, our churches are waiting for, our nations and our cities are waiting for. And this is how Paul talks to him. Just to give you a little bit of a background, coming up to verse 12. But you, O oh man of God, flee all these negative things that I've just listed for you and follow righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. What's he saying, man? Follow faith. Follow the Spirit of God. Follow the fruit that comes from, the, from a spiritual walk with God. Hallelujah. And fight the good fight of faith. Don't you love how in verse 11 he says, follow faith, and then he says, fight with faith. We've been going through all these different cases in the uh, four Gospels, 10 of them that I've found where Jesus said that it was the faith of the person that had to, something to do with the miracle that was accomplished. Like blind Bartimaeus, like the woman with the issue of blood, like Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue, like the two blind men found there in Matthew chapter 9. And we've kind of centered on those mostly, but there are others. There, there are 10 uh, total. And we've, uh, what I've been wanting to do is point them out to you so you can have an example. Faith is not something that's just a teaching. Faith is something that's living. Faith is something that's alive and it's contagious and it's infectious. If you see somebody speaking by faith, I tell you, words of faith start to rise up in you. If you don't believe it's true, just go to the halftime of any football game. I mean, whether the team's down or whether the team's up, whether the coach spends a little time chastising the team, usually it all comes back to, come on, guys, you can do it. Come on, I know, we've been working together. You're a team, I've seen you win before. You can come back this time. Come on, men. I'll tell you one thing about faith. I'll tell you, women will catch the contagious faith of a man of faith. And I'll tell you something, women, if your man's not so faithful, become a woman of faith and spread that spirit and attitude in your house. Talk like he is. Act like he is. Men, come on, get up. Men are made to be faithful. <laughs> Why is there so much homosexuality in America today? Men are weak. Shh. We don't want to say things like that. It might even get us in trouble today. But I tell you what, man, men like me, we, we, we don't have a choice. We're going to raise up godly men around us in our churches. We got to say stuff like this. Come on, man, we feed on this in the media. We, we like the weak. We like the, we prefer that which is passive. And I'll tell you what, faith is not passive. The Holy Spirit is not passive. The Bible is filled with the principle of reciprocity, man. You do something and God will do something. You know why? God's already made the first move. He's already done everything. 
One of the reasons it's easy to be faithful is because, man, Jesus laid his life down at the cross. And, and so all I have to do is buy into that what's already been done. And the full victory has already been won. But I can't walk around pretending like since it's already been won, everything's okay with me. No, no, no. I got to pick up that same cross, man. And I got to follow Jesus. And I got to remind myself, Jesus, thank you for what you've done. Jesus, thank you for what you've done for my family. Jesus, thank you for what you've done for my church. This is a picture of faith. It's blind Bartimaeus, Jesus walking by, man. The only thing he could do is cry out to Jesus. The only thing the woman with the issue of blood had time to do is just follow him in the crowd. And while she was following him, just think some thoughts. You know, what's going to happen here? Here, let me get a clear view. I'm going to follow him. I'm going to grab onto those wings of healing that are tassels on the bottom of his garment. And something's going to happen to me. I will be made whole. Today we got people coming to church, and I'm picking on the men right now. Men coming to church, and you just, man, the woman of the issue of blood puts you to shame. Creeping in, trying to find a corner to hide in. Oh, it's quiet today. <laughs> but I tell you something that I know you know, men. You love to hear preaching like this. Because it touches something in you, the man part. The God made in you. The God part in your heart. Something that says, man, I'm called to do something. I'm supposed to be somebody. You're not called to creep around, to hide out. To let the enemy take over your nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's okay just to go with it today. But you, oh man of God, Timothy was doing okay in 1 Timothy, man. The church he pastored in Ephesus, and he was an apostle. And I like that. You know, he wasn't just what we call a pastor today. The word pastor is so passive. Pastor. Well, I want you to know, man, whether you ever come back to this church or not, I am not that kind of pastor. And that doesn't mean I don't have a heart of love and the compassion and things like that. No, I do. But I don't, we don't need pastors like that today. They're just creeping around quietly, trying to be something the Bible never called us to be. But you, Timothy, oh man of God, rise up and keep rising up. You're doing well today, Timothy. But you remember something. You're a man of God. Forget about titles, apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, event. Forget about that. This is what you really are. You're a man of God. This is what I want to be in the pulpit, a man of God. Jew, O man of God, follow after these things and fight. Nothing worse than a man that won't fight. Nothing worse than a man that will let everything taken from him. Lose his wife, lose his kids or some other guy. Never stand up. Have a pity party instead because you've been raised not to know what to do because you haven't been fathered, because you haven't been coached. But it might be because nobody can get a hold of you because you're never around. Where are you, oh man of God? God's looking for you today. <laughs> Jesus. Listen, I know what I'm talking about, man. My dad was a deadbeat dad. So even though I didn't learn from the positive side, I got to see it real good from the negative side. This is what you don't do. You don't leave your wife with four boys to raise. You don't do that. You don't walk away and become irresponsible. All right? When you're not sure what to do, you stick in there. And especially when you're a Christian, you hang in there and you claw your way back, do whatever you have to do in the meantime, because you know God's coming through sometime. You know Jesus has done everything already for all time, so you're going to hang in there and you're going to trust. That's a man of faith. You don't have to be perfect, men. You don't have to know everything it means to be men, but men have to stand up today. I don't know, maybe God's picking on men. And the lady said, amen. I'm looking for amen. I don't know what it is, but it, it irritates me when I see so many preachers on TV and there's so few men. Joyce Myers is more of a man than any preacher on TV, any man. And I mean that in the best sense of the word, man. I mean, she, anytime, just about any time I hear Joyce Myers, I get sharpened. Something happens to me. I hear something. I know she's spending time with God. Something comes through. <laughs> I 
I think sometimes God has to send us the Joyce Myers, you know, to, to wake up other, other, not only women, but men. Fight the good fight of faith. Boy, I don't know how far we're going to get today in this sermon. I, I'm actually going with the sermon today, though. That's a start. <laughs> fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Why is this message so important? Because without fighting with faith, you may not make it to the finish line. You see, we don't really want to hear that. We're not, we just want to be told we're okay and we will be safe. But here's a question for you this morning. What if you're not? Did you want the pastor just to give you everything you wanted to hear and then come up short in the end? Of course not. The regions of hell are filled today and will be filled one day with people that said, I wish I had. And I'm sure they're filled with people blaming people that didn't tell them what they should have done. Listen, if you're a man or a woman, you're a Christian in this place today, you've got God living inside you. You've got everything that you need. I just want to sharpen that today. I just want to stand up here like a father to you today. Even though some of you may be older than me, like a father, I want to tell you, you're a man of God. You're a woman of God. You can do it. So stand up and do it. So Pastor Rocky, I don't know what to do. That's okay. Any pastor this morning would love to just be greeted at the door with people saying, I don't know what to do, pastor, but I'm here to do something. You see, I'd rather have somebody that's always doing the wrong thing because I can get a hold of them and steer them back to the center and hopefully towards the right thing. One thing I know is like as a pastor, you come to a church, you don't necessarily know what everybody's called to do. So this gets to be a tricky situation. Sometimes you got to try to figure out who everybody is and it takes a little bit of time and you need people to be patient with you. But I know one thing and that is that, man, God has a plan for every person. The, the, the church never is outlined. And this is why Paul's talking like this to Timothy. is never outlined in the New Testament as just a passive congregation. The church is outlined with, with clear guidelines and responsibilities. You want to know what the church is? Just look at Acts chapter 2. When the Holy Spirit fell on them, what did they do? One guy got up and preached, but that was just one guy. It wasn't just Peter that reached all those people. Peter was a voice. Peter was a mouthpiece. But there were, there were a lot of other people, you know. There were the people in the upper room. The 120 at least were around him. And that's how they harvested the 3,000 and the 5,000. And God adding to the church daily. And God multiplying the church. That's how they did it. They just kept working with God. It was them moving together. Hey, let me say this to you. Every church always, you know, needs to outline its vision. One of the clearest parts of the vision for Connections Church is we are not just any church. If we become like that, we got to fold up tent. Because there's enough of those already. I I've pastored them myself. I've been one of those before. We don't have time for that anymore. We need people that understand, hey, faith is something that's for you. You can't poke your neighbor in the ribs this morning. Say, pastor's talking to you. He's not. He's talking to you too. Right? We've got to be people of faith. We gotta be, we've got to be the Bartimaeuses today. We, we don't see well today. We are sick like the woman with the issue of blood today. And I hope that that's part of what you go home with this afternoon to think about is that you don't just see the one side, but you try to see the whole picture. 